So in the previous video, we focused on doing a data analysis on paired data. So Richmond air quality data paired by Lexington. And we looked at the paired t-test and the non-parametric equivalent for that paired t-test. In this particular example, we're going to look at a situation where maybe the data are not coming to you as paired. They may have been paired at one point in time. You may not know that, or you're going to be working with data that for some reason they never were collected in a paired way. So you may have 30 observations from Richmond for a given month, 30 observations from Lexington for a given month, but you don't necessarily know which day they were collected on. And you may have reason to believe that they're not uh, paired in any way. So you're interested in seeing does the average of the Richmond air quality monitor for that particular month match the average for the Lexington air quality? So how are we going to do that? Well, we can do a t-test that's going to compare the 30 Richmond observations overall versus the 30 observations for Lexington overall. So under stats, down to t-test, we're going to now select a command that is called the two sample test. And in the two sample test, our analysis variable is the PM225 uh, underscore PPB. And then if we were to look at the air data file on the um, output, you see here it is. And then it's being categorized by a monitor variable. The variable is called monitor. So back to t-test here, the analysis variable is pm25 underscore ppb. That's a continuous variable for the analysis variable. And the group variable should be a column that's coded, you know, in a way that we can do the analysis by group. So in this case, a 0, 1 variable, or here a Richmond-Lexington variable. So we've got that done. For our options, you know, we have the ability now, early on, to address whether or not we want to look at the non-parametric option, so we can turn that on there. And we can also be prepared in case we have unequal variance. Whenever we do a two-tailed uh, t-test, we should assume equal variance. If we have unequal variance, we need to be prepared to do the unequal variance t-test. Also, if our values going into it do not fit the normal distribution in either one of those variables, we may want to use the Wilcoxon rank sum test, AKA the Man Whitney test. So we go ahead and run our command and it's went ahead over here and done it. There's all the code that goes into it. I can zoom out so you can see all the, the code that just went into it. All this went into that. So we've got our results here. So what do we see with our results? First thing it did was it did the normality statistics for the PM25 PPB monitor for Lexington. And we see the p-values are all fairly high. So as a group, it met the normality assumption for Lexington. And we go down to the monitor for Richmond. The p-values all appear very high. So we have reason to believe we met the normality assumption for Richmond. So the t-test is likely the most appropriate test in this example. Now, when we look at our actual values here, we have Lexington, Richmond, and then these differences. And we got these mean values and all this other information. And it's giving us all this stuff and at the end of it we have the folded f-test result the f-test is the test that is used for determining whether or not there is equal variance between the lexington and richmond monitor and in this case the p-value is 0 0.93 so since it's a high p-value we can conclude that the data we're working with meet the equal variance assumption. So that's a good thing. Now, this also gives us the t-test results. The pooled t-test is assuming equal variance. 
These two are options for unequal variance. The Satterthwaite unequal variance is the most common one you'll see reported in research uh, articles and public health, and it's also probably the most common one you see come with a lot of STAT programs. There's no difference here between the unequal and equal variance p-values for the t-test. The t-test here shows a no difference between the Lexington and Richmond air model. The mean of 5.44 plus or minus, you know, these numbers is not different than the mean 5.43 plus or minus those numbers. So we have insufficient evidence to conclude a difference. Therefore, we assume that the Lexington and Richmond air quality monitors provided roughly the same numbers for the month of July when the data were collected. We have other imagery here. So F-test tells us whether or not we should use unequal or equal variance. High p-values, we can use equal variance. If it was a low p-value, like less than 0.05, or even some people maybe get more conservative, less than 0.1, they may choose unequal. But high p-values, equal variance is appropriate. So now looking at the histograms and the QQ plots, We've got the data up here that says that they meet the normal assumption. Um, so we possibly are okay in that regard anyways. But in the event that they did fail, we've already got the Wilcoxon test results here. And if they were not normal, and you chose to use the non-parametric equivalent, we see the p-value of 0.98 which is the T approximation based off of, you know, the non-parametric test. So the Wilcoxon two sample test, also known as the uh, Mann-Whitney U test, shows us a p-value of 0.98. So again, no statistically significant difference based upon the rank sums of Richmond versus Lexington. So again, probably the best test to use here based on the information provided would be the equal variance t-test, so the pool t-test, the paired, or not paired, but the, the two sample pool t-test or the two sample equal variance t-test shows no difference since p is 0.9759, which is clearly way above 0.05. So, easy enough. We've got these box plots here also that kind of come along with when you do the non-parametric analysis. And there's also an alternative um, non-parametric test that's provided there too, the Kruskal Wallace. And there's different reasons why you may choose to use either of those, but uh, for a introductory level, um, you know, grad applied stat class, we're going to hold off right there. So easy enough, you can get everything all you need right from our or from uh, SAS Studio just by clicking on these particular boxes for that particular test. So we're going to go ahead and stop it here. And if you have questions, feel free to let me know. Thank you.